We have got some online comments that we're going to queue, but I just want to read another message from 8102. Wow, good morning. Love to hear you guys on air. Lighting my Friday morning. Eric, 너무 좋아요. He also eats very heartily. So another fan coming in. Thank you for your message. All right, so now let's hear um, what netins, netizens had to say about this topic. Preference of a few cannot represent everyone's preference. Star rating system is so over. It is called Michelin Stars precisely because that company has set its standard to pick and choose the restaurants. The star rating system doesn't represent everyone's palate. If you don't like it, then you don't need to care about it. I use delivery apps precisely because they have a comments and review section. Not every comment is negative. All online retail and delivery services offer rating systems and they are necessary for consumers in making an informed decision. Many users abuse the rating system by making mean and fake comments. And they can get away with it, because there are no legal repercussions. Does anyone still believe in the reviews and ratings, and the so-called great restaurants? Be selective of what you believe. Any restaurant can receive good reviews with money. I search a long time online for good restaurants. Koreans really like good food. We certainly do like good food, and I guess that's why we um, place a lot of trust, I guess, or importance on these rating systems. What did you think about these comments? I think, like, the... The important thing is, like, usually when you're traveling to a place, you want a good recommendation and something to take the place of, say, a personal recommendation. Mm-hmm. I mean, the best, like, uh, the best recommendation would be from a friend. Be like, hey, I'm exactly. looking for something good. I want to take my girlfriend out or my wife or whatever. Girlfriend yeah, or wife? Well, depending okay. on if you have a girlfriend or <laughs> not, wife. Not your <laughs> girlfriend or wife. <laughs> just to clarify. Right. You have a place for both of them? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you don't get in trouble, Eric. <laughs> uh-huh. No, you know, you ask your friends, be like, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a good restaurant. Can you recommend something? And then... They'll know your taste and they can recommend something specifically. The difficult thing about these apps is that the person that's rating them may not have the same like, taste as you. Mm-hmm. And it's not so specific as, say, like a hotel app when they can, like, I need a two-bedroom, one-bathroom, this and that. And they can specifically find something. Right. Or these restaurant apps can't specifically find something for your specific taste. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's difficult. Yes. And there's, a, of course, the issue that was raised by one of the comments that some people might abuse this rating system right. online. It may be fake or it may be deliberately malicious um, because I read an article where I think one of the biggest delivery systems in Korea, they are now strengthening their rating system. So it's not just about the restaurant, but they want to give a rating system for the individual menus as well. Mm. But the restaurants are already saying, we already suffer because people sometimes, they threaten the restaurants and say, give me something for s a b i s e Give me right. something for free or else I'm going to post a bad review. And right. you might think, you know, if it has a good reputation already, it shouldn't be affected. But like... Like we do, we we place a lot of importance on these ratings, so it affects their sales. Yeah, it does. And then, I mean, especially with the delivery app, I think sometimes that's even unfair because you're probably not always getting the food at its peak quality, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's been delivered. Who knows how long it's taken, right? So it's really hard to judge a menu based on you received it 20 minutes after it's been driving around Seoul on a motorcycle, right? So that's one thing to consider. And then the other thing I think uh, with the rating, especially the five-star system, is people are more likely to leave these reviews if they're really satisfied or really angry. That's true. So most people are just like, oh, it's okay. They're not going to go on and say anything. So you're going to get these kind of extreme polarizing things. And a lot of times... And what do the stars actually mean? I don't think people ever actually follow the criteria. If Mm -hmm. I go to a restaurant and maybe the food was amazing, but I didn't like the waiter or I didn't like Mm -hmm. the attitude, and I give it zero or one star, is that really an accurate portrayal of the place? Mm -hmm. Or the same thing, like if a place is good and I'm like, well, I don't want to give it three stars, but it's really not amazing. A lot of people are giving four and five stars just because, but is that really a great restaurant? I mean. Most, I mean, what's the difference between a four and a five star on a lot of these apps? I think most people, it's just Depends personality. Depends on your right? mood. Exactly. Yeah, whether right? you're so a more I, generous person or not so generous. Right, exactly, right? So, <laughs> I think it's kind of like you said, like a lot of people when they go out to these restaurants, either they really loved it or they, or they hated it. Yeah. So there's no actually like middle ground where mm-hmm. was it a good restaurant, was it decent, how did it compare price-wise or whatever your specific needs were. 
And I think maybe a lot of people don't actually even leave a review. Mm. So out of like, say, 100 people go to this restaurant, how many people are actually leaving a review? True. Yeah. They would only do that if they really loved or hated their experience. So do you think the star, like the one to five star, would be uh, more accurate rather than a thumbs up or down? Well, I I think all these... Do you have any preference? Yeah, I was kind of reading about that for the systems while I was kind of researching the show. And it's like, yes and no, because I mean, the thumbs up and thumbs down is more clear. Like, Mm -hmm. I liked it. But I, and I didn't like it. But there's also no middle ground. And I, I think a lot of times most of our experiences at restaurants lie in that middle ground, sure. right? So, I mean, is it – it's nice to say, okay, it's good or bad. I think that gets it out of the way of like definitely don't go here. Mm-hmm. And definitely, so I, I, I kind of like the thumbs up and thumbs down for a lot of things because it's like, okay, if enough people say don't go there, there's exactly. probably a reason. Right. And if enough people say – so it's – in my opinion, even though it's kind of – because there's no ambiguity, it's more clear. But also, like I said, there's no way of distinguishing the really great places from just the okay places. Mm-hmm. So especially mm-hmm. if I'm visiting a place at, as a tourist, I need more than just a thumbs up or thumbs down. I want to know, like, what's the best place or where do I really have to go to? Mm-hmm. And I think, but even with the four or five star rating system, you kind of lack that, right? Because you look mm-hmm. at most of these restaurants are between like 4.2 and 4.8. And, but exactly. the quality is vastly different, <laughs> right? <laughs> true, but it true. doesn't really kind of reflect right. that. So I think just grading and rating systems in general are just very inaccurate, mm-hmm. right? So. But that said, I mean, I think it's not just in Korea. Most people like good food and most people want some sort of recommendation before or just, you know, going into any right. restaurant. So they do rely on these ratings. So ratings do come with pros and cons if we want to just go over those pros and cons, right? Right. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, some of the pros are, I mean, it gives us information. It tells us a little bit about it. Also, a lot of times you can include pictures, right? So I think that's really good when we can look at this food. I think mm-hmm. I, of course, like pictures. I think that's why that one picture app is really popular. You post a lot of them. I do. I post <laughs> pictures of my food, right? Yes. It's, people prefer to see pictures of my food than me. No, I don't know why. I prefer pictures uh, of you. Thank you. Me Thank too. you. Really? All right. Yes. I'm, I'm going to spam you guys with a bunch of pictures of me today. <laughs> no, just and put then, them up there. Yeah. Like I said, it does help you to weed out the really bad places. I mean, if a place has got, a, you know, one star or it's all thumbs down, you probably don't want to go there. There's probably mm-hmm. a reason. I, like, think, I think to that point about the pictures, I think a lot of people, like when you're going out to these restaurants, like you may not remember the quality of the food, to be honest, but you'll remember like the, the, the ambiance or the actual location because more so than the food, a lot of times you're just renting a different space to eat. Because mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times you're going to go out and say you're ordering spaghetti or something that you can make at home. You're not going to go there and be like, oh, this spaghetti made, made it so that I'll never eat spaghetti mm-hmm. again because I can only eat here. <laughs> right. But if you're in this beautiful place, you have beautiful company, you know, you're having a romantic dinner or whatever it may be, you remember that spot. And then also the good thing about meals is that you basically got three times to get it right. In the day, right? <laughs> so, like, it's not like if you go on vacation to a hotel, you're like, oh, this place, you know, I'm going to leave a bad review because the service is bad because you're investing a lot of money mm-hmm. and it's your vacation. Whereas you're eating three times a day. So, if you do have a, a subpar lunch, you can always make up for it. Make dinner. up at dinner and then now you're winning. Right. You know? Ideally, though, you want all three experiences yes, to be good as absolutely. well. Absolutely. But as we mentioned, you guys only have three meals on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you people? <laughs> Thank you, Kobe, for bringing that up. I was yeah. like, three meals? That's it? Right, right, right. <laughs> Especially on vacation? What? <laughs> exactly. I like to. At least double it, six yes. meals a day when, uh, when you're on vacation. But you mentioned the pros, but there are definitely cons mm. as well. I mean, I hear a lot of people saying that because of this huge importance placed on ratings, that, you know, and especially on the picture gram as well, um, some restaurants are completely empty if they don't have any buzz online, right. if they don't have enough pictures online, if they don't have any ratings. Uh, whereas the other ones, they will be packed. So it creates this, again, sort of a very imbalanced uh, sort of a nature because of these rating right. systems and other think, cons as well, right? I've, I've some of my friends who are like restaurant owners in mm-hmm. Seoul, they've kind of said something similar. Like a lot of them have great food, but because it's not Instagrammable, it's not visually yeah. like pleasing, they don't have a lot of like business and they're like, oh, how do we compete with these restaurants that like maybe their food quality isn't as good, but it looks visually mm-hmm. appealing for Instagram or for whatever. So like I think like one of the cons is, is this... Um, the visual stimulation that we need today, you know, through Instagram and whatever it may be. Mm. But I think the visual experience is also an important part, right. not to mention that the ambiance that you mentioned, the, you know, the surroundings, the mood of the restaurant, right. but also it has to look good to want to, for you to want Absolutely. to eat it as well, I believe. But is right. it only Korea that uses or places so much importance on well, this? Well, I think Korea has home? that one kind of web porthole and mm-hmm. blog site that almost everyone relies on, right? Yes. If you're, 
we're gonna you're someplace and you say let's look for a restaurant and then you use that word as a verb let's do that right, right. like let's search right. it so I think that five star system is very important in Korea I think if you go back to America and there's multiple kind of ways where we get input from right, right. I don't think there's one site we look for right there is the kind of search engine site mm. that rates things based on their map app right mm -hmm. and then there's restaurant apps that rate restaurants and hotels app hotel apps that rate hotels so I think depending on what you're looking for there's more kind of diversity and where we get information right. from. So in a way, I think Korea is a little more convenient. You just go to one source. Right. But then also it's like that's your only source, whereas like there are at least some more there's more competition where you can look around. So I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but there's just different ways to get It just seems ratings. like that's the kind of way things are going. I mean, people are busy. People don't have a lot of time to search and go through, you know, an hour of reviews for lunch or for dinner. And so they're going to go through a couple of trusted applications mm -hmm. and get reviews, and they, and they really want to trust them. That's why I think people are, are so maybe sad if it doesn't live up to the review because they're like, man, I, I really trusted this app. Like it was, I'm using this information as if it was a friend <laughs> telling me that this restaurant was good. Uh -huh. And then you really let down if you go there and it's underwhelming. Especially if you do trust one review sort of right. site or mm. um, service more than the others. But there is that, um, the fake reviews, I guess, right. that could pose a greater mm. problem. Um, I heard one good news, though, um, in Japan, and anyways, they've come up with an AI sort of based program that weeds out fake reviews. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. And because of this, there was a huge sort of um, change up in the best ramen that you can find oh, in really? Tokyo oh. as well. So hopefully we can incorporate that into Korea and elsewhere as well. Very interesting topic. And it was really great to have you, Eric. Huh. Hopefully you'll join us next week. How would you yeah, rate his performance you. out of five stars today? <laughs> five thumbs stars. up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Two, oh. two thumbs, thumbs up. up. Yeah, right. wow. definitely. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me on today. And thank you as always, thank Kobe you. as well. See you next week.